It's Friday, October 25. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. Jamaica has moved up four places in the World Bank's Doing Business Report rankings. The 2020 report, released on Thursday, stated that Jamaica ranked at 71 out of 190 countries, moving from its 75 position of 2019. Jamaica had previously fallen in the rankings for three consecutive years. The island's best ranking is in the category of starting a business. The report shows that Jamaica made starting a business faster by reinstating next-day service for company incorporation, streamlining internal procedures, and enabling of companies' offices of Jamaica to stamp the new company's articles of incorporation at registration. On the trade side, the document noted that Jamaica reduced the time for documentary compliance for importing by implementing a web-based customs data management platform, the ASYCUDA World. The revitalization of downtown Kingston is a priority of the government. To that end, two Spanish companies will be paid U.S. $500,000 for a plan to redevelop sections of downtown Kingston. In a ministry paper tabled in Parliament Tuesday, the Andrew Holness-led administration disclosed that Cabinet approved a contract to undertake the exercise. The Downtown Kingston and Port Royal Redevelopment Plan was prepared in 2013. Lecturers at the University of Technology, UTEC, have reportedly taken industrial action. The Executive Committee of the UTEC Jamaica Academic Staff Union has reportedly instructed its members to seize all work-related activities with immediate effect until the university provides outstanding retroactive payments due to its members at the end of October. The union has reportedly said there will be a complete withdrawal of service by its members until the retroactive payments are made. The Ministry of Energy is pushing ahead with plans to diversify the country's fuel mix with more renewable sources by 2030. Speaking at Parliament's Public Accounts Committee, Principal Director of Energy Fitzroy Vidal said the ministry believes it can accomplish a switch to green energy by targeting government entities which are the largest users of fuel. So what we're trying to do is to make sure that all the key stakeholders are at the table, part of this consultative process, and the technical working group that will be looking at all of these issues before we come to the point of a policy. As a matter of fact, it's among the reasons why we have not gone straight to a policy. We're developing a strategic framework, a framework to make sure that we understand all the issues, not just the buses, not just the charging stations net requirement, not just the public fiscal arrangements that has to be put in place since you're moving from one fuel to another, which, will, which has a potential of upsetting the, the fiscal regime. All those issues are part of the electric mobility strategic framework that we are assessing, and our commitment is to bring all the parties to the table. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the Jamaican government has been following a comprehensive plan to move the island's health sector forward. He made the statement at the recent groundbreaking of the new Western Children Adolescent Hospital in Montego Bay. The Prime Minister said the more government invests in social services, the greater the development of human and social capital. The Children's Hospital is a gift from the People's Republic of China at a cost of U.S. $43 million. It will be built on the grounds of the Cornell Regional Hospital, which is under reconstruction. Mr. Holness noted the challenges being faced by hospital staff and patients. It is a sad state. And I want the people of Jamaica to know that your leadership, your government, your prime minister that you elected, whether or not you voted for yes or no, I'm still your prime minister. I want you to know that we are not running away from the problem. He said now that the country's debt has been reduced from 147% of GDP to 93%, there is some fiscal space to spend more on social services. We have a little more fiscal space and what are we doing with that fiscal space? We have used some of that through the Ministry of Health 
and commendations to the minister and his team for being agile in response. And we have built, I have seen, the new facilities that you have built where all the diagnostics can take place. The new clinic facilities, the A&E that you have built, open since April. And you have built the necessary um, labs using containers so that you are still able, without a building, to deliver service. It may not be up to the service standard, the quality, but it is still life-saving. According to the Prime Minister, his administration will be making capital investments in the Spanish Stone Hospital and others. When it is finished and you look at it, it is going to be lovely. We are making investments as well in St. Anne's Bay. The Minister has pointed out to me that there is a lovely plan for the UA hospital. And then we are making a massive investment in retrofitting, refurbishing, retooling, re-equipping, re-everything this building. You're going to get a brand new building when it is done. Meanwhile, Chinese Ambassador of the People's Republic of China to Jamaica, Tian Shi, welcomes this new initiative and what it will represent. We can see that. In uh, about two years, there will be a new great children and adolescents hospital here in Jamaica. It should be the biggest one, not only in Jamaica, but also in the whole Caribbean. The new voter identification cards will be tamper proof. Assistant Director of Elections in charge of information systems, Thesia Allison, says the cards will be issued by the Electoral Office of Jamaica, EOJ, during its national voter ID renewal exercise in November. And those those features are to be res are resistant to counterfeit alterations and other photo substitutions. Mrs. Allison was speaking at a JIS think tank session. She explained that pre-printed cards will be produced by security printers overseas. She noted that the personalization of the card, like your name and address, will be added in Jamaica. According to Mrs. Allison, the EOJ has also procured a new card printer to facilitate laser engraving. The new cards is comparable, comparable to the specification standards of a national identification card. It's a polycarbonate card, which is a thermoplastic, which is highly receptive to laser engraving, which is what we'll be using on those new cards. It has a lifespan of 10 years, of at least 10 years, and it's the typical standard wallet-sized cards. The renewal exercise is slated to begin November 4. Holders of cards issued in 2015 and before are advised to visit any EOJ constituency office for Voter ID Renewal Center to begin the process. Persons with cards issued between 2016 and 2019 do not have to visit an EOJ office as their cards will be reprinted and they will be notified when they're ready. For more information on the voter ID card renewal process, persons can contact the Electoral Office of Jamaica at 876-922-04-2529 or toll-free at 1-888-991-VOTE. That's 1-888-991-8688. Or visit the EOJ office island-wide. This week on Culinary Trails, we wend our way through the busy city streets of Halfway Tree and Crossroads, sipping on smoothies. Everyone knows about your basic fruits and vegetable smoothies, those creamy pureed filling drinks. You can add an array of various spices, herbs, superfoods, and other health foods. The possibilities are endless. 
Hi, my name is Leonard Christian. I'm from Central Smoothie. And today I will be preparing um, a granola punch for you guys. In the granola punch, you get the protein powder, the granola mostly, oats, banana, and almond milk. Come on. Throws the banana Less than a minute. Ready. So why should you drink smoothies? They're healthy. You'll get your daily allowance of fruits and vegetables. Also, they're quick and easy. Make your own nutrient-dense smoothie. It doesn't take as long as preparing most meals. It gives you time for other things. Today, I'm going to do for you our special strawberry crush that includes banana, pineapple, strawberry, and protein. We'll be using the way strawberry-flavored protein today, orange juice. Strawberries, depending on if you're a strawberry. To that, we'll add half a scoop of protein. And a scoop of ice. I just love a good fruit smoothie. Let's see if Jamaicans are into the idea of thick blended fruits and veggies. So what's your favorite smoothie? Strawberry banana. Wow. Do you think Jamaicans are really into this smoothie thing or do you think it's something that's catching on but not quite much? For persons who, I mean, believe in like being healthy, then yes. It's not really about like a trend thing. Some people really take it seriously. Like for me, I love strawberry banana or strawberry or even the, um, the pumpkin seed. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's refreshing. It's when you're hot, you know Jamaica is hot. So when you're hot, you go, you add a smoothie. It cools you down because you have the ice, the ice stays and the fruit stays. And yeah, it's good like that. What's your favorite smoothie? Power punch. What's in a power punch smoothie? Um, protein, granada, oats, soy milk, I think, and fruit, banana. Yes, I see, it, it fills you up for the day, so it's very good. Next time you're in Halfway Tree, check out the smoothie stand in Central Plaza or OJ's Smoothies in Crossroads, right by Harmon Barracks. 
The U.S. dollar ended trading on Thursday at Jamaican $138.90, down by three cents. That's according to the Bank of Jamaica's daily foreign exchange trading summary. The Canadian dollar ended trading at Jamaican $106.21 up from $106.17, while the British pound sterling ended trading at Jamaican $179.42, up from $178.77. In regional news, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis has announced an extension of the exigency order issued in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian that slammed into the Bahamas chain over a month ago. According to Minnis, the order has been extended to December 31. The order allows for individuals directly impacted by the hurricane to import approved goods, duty-free and value-added tax-free. It applies to areas impacted by the storm, including Abaco, Abaco Keys, Grand Bahama, Sweetings, Deepwater, and Water Key. VAT on fuel for generators will also be waived for areas still without electricity. Mr. Minnis made the announcements in the House of Assembly during his wrap-up of the debate on amendments to the Disaster Preparedness and Response Act. In Guyana, there is uncertainty over whether the Alliance for Change party will remain in coalition with a partnership for national unity to contest the next general election in March 2020. This after the two parties failed to reach an agreement as to who will represent them as a prime ministerial candidate. The AFC's treasurer, who is part of the party's negotiating team, told the press conference Thursday morning that he was not sure why the talks on the issue were being pushed back. I would prefer if um, someone else or if someone from their side could explain to you, the media, what their, um, what their issues were with accepting our um, prime ministerial candidate, because to be honest with you, it was not very clear to us on what basis um, the deferrals or the matter kept being deferred. The FC has decided that it will have current third Vice President Kamraj Ramjatan as the Prime Ministerial candidate and there will be no change in that position. I would ask you why. We've already made a decision. We have internally had not had any discussions that points us in that direction. And we don't accept that any other entity or any other party shall tell us or dictate to us who we should choose as our prime ministerial candidate. We're an independent party. We have made a decision. We have made a choice. Uh, why should we revisit that discussion? Why should we um, go back to our membership and say, let's you know, have another decision? On what basis? Gaskin said he sees no issue with a prime ministerial candidate being selected ahead of the elections, saying it does not affect the constitutional provision for the president to make the appointment. Given the stalemate, the AFC's National Executive Committee will meet on November 2nd, and a decision could be made on how the party proceeds ahead of the March 2020 elections. So at that National Executive Committee meeting, we will have to make some very definitive um, or we'll have to make some very clear decisions on how we plan to move ahead and how we plan to participate in the elections. That is a discussion that we'll have to have at that forum. I can't preempt that discussion, but certainly the de decisions will have to be made at that forum. So that provides a window of opportunity for these discussions to conclude. However, our position is that we cannot have any further discussions on a revised Cummingsburg Accord until there is consensus on the positions of the presidential and prime ministerial candidates. Party Chairman Rafael Trotman says neither the AFC nor the APNU would like the results of the elections if they choose to go separate ways, but he's hoping for compromise. There's always room for compromise. I think by the very nature of negotiations, compromises must be found. Um, there's a, a very famous principle in negotiations, the best alternative to a, a negotiated settlement, the BATNA. And I think both the APNU and the AFC have to look to see what is the best alternative to a negotiated settlement. Right now, uh, I don't see a better alternative to a coalition, quite frankly. 
In Trinidad, the UNC has withdrawn its court application to block the sale of the state-owned Petrochin to a OWTU-owned company. The Embers attorney, Martin Daly, informed the court that a meeting of the JSC on energy will be held next Wednesday, October 30th. And outside the Hall of Justice were members of the OWTU who said, once again, the UNC realized they can't block the sale of the Petrochin refinery and have accepted their loss. In an attempt to stop this great army from going forward. But comrades, we are a praying union. We have God on our side. We have right on our side. We have justice on our side. And so this afternoon they had to withdraw. The OWTU executive likened the UNC's actions to that of something out of their political meetings. It was an attempt to turn the Hall of Justice into the Monday Night Forum. <laughs> we are a strong and powerful union. We have journeyed long and hard. We have had to face many trials, many tribulations. But we continue to be successful. In sports, Jamaica's reggae boys has moved up in FIFA rankings and are now third in the CONCACAF region. This places the reggae boys at 45th in the world. It also puts the boys behind Mexico, which tops the CONCACAF region, and the USA, which fell two places to 23rd in the world in second. The boys are currently one point away from sealing group honors and automatic qualification to the next CONCACAF World Cup tournament. They lead the four-team Group C with maximum 12 points, followed by Guyana and Antigua and Barbuda on six points, with Aruba pointless at the foot of the table. The competition continues next month with Jamaica up against Guyana at home and then away to Antigua and Barbuda for a few days later. And over on the pitch, West Indies test captain Jason Holder is looking to make his mark in T20 cricket in the upcoming series against Afghanistan. Uh, Jason Holder has made his name in the longer format of the game over the past four years. He has become one of the world's leading cricketer. The cricket, you know, I'd probably ask for a bit of time off, you know, having played all the test matches, all the one-day games. Um, it's been relentless in terms of the scheduling, so I mean, trying to find some time to rest, you know, is important. And, and I just felt the T20 arena was that on the international stage. But yeah, it's good to be back. Obviously, we're gearing towards a, a World Cup and a World Cup defence. So yeah, I want to be a part of that, you know, I want to play a significant part in that. So this is the right place to start. And I think every test match is very, very important. Um, tests don't come easy, and uh, we know how hard we're going to work to play a test match. So this encounter against, against Afghanistan and their back here will be very, very interesting. And I think the guys are really up for it, and you know, I'm looking forward to the challenge. You know, it'll be good to finish off well on a personal note and, and obviously on a team note as well. And that's the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom. Have a great weekend.